Good morning, geometry students. Okay, so today we're looking at trigonometry for the first time. So trigonometry, people get scared when they hear it. It's not as scary as we think. We just have to be a little bit brave sometimes and do things and just go through it and try and get to our best and see what happens after that. So. The first thing is I've included in our files one of these. Now, I don't know how much any of us is copy, uh, I know a couple of students, you know, Chris is, is downloading and printing things up, but uh, some other people were, uh, which is okay. Uh, I, I, if there's one thing you can print, if you can find time to print one particular file, I would like you to print this file. Now, this is a foldable, I'm just going to quickly show you how to fold it. You don't have to fold it. You could leave leave this like this. You can put it above your bed next to your picture of me that you, you go to every night and you say, okay, see you, Mr. Plants, in the morning. Uh, you could put this as a poster somewhere. I'm just kidding. Just print it up if you can. Find a way to print it up. There's one thing I want you to print up. It's going to be important over the next week is this. If you have this with you, you're going to it's going to make your life a bit easier. Okay? So... How to fold this thing. Okay, well, first thing is I'm going to take it, I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to fold it this way. So Sokotoa comes over here with this word, so the three words, Sokotoa, come over, and I fold it on that black line. Okay. Then I flip this thing over, and it looks like this now. I'm going to fold it along this line, this way all the way up until a set comes up to these words that say trig functions. Trig is just a short way of saying trigonometry. So now I have this really cool little folder. And now, so if you see the advantages of this, if you have it and it's folded, it is good to have out. Now, if you can't print anything, uh, save it to your desktop and just open it when you're doing this work. It might make it easier that way. I really suggest if there was one thing you can print up, it would be this. So. One last step to this. I'm going to go grab my scissors real quick. And with these scissors, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here. I'm going to go underneath. I'm going to cut on the dotted line all the way through. Here, I'm going to cut on the dotted line all the way through. Now, Here's our problem. Now once I cut like that, if you cut like that, you don't have to cut like that. You can just keep it folded. Now if I want to look at one, I have the information. If I want to look at cosine or cot, I have the information like that. It makes things a little bit easier. Or if I want to do toa, I have it like that. So this is a really, really, really nice way to keep things organized and you don't have to memorize the trig functions. Okay, but we are going to memorize the tree function. I'm going to teach you a word. Our word is this. So, ka, toa. You remember these words, so ka, toa, you will be fine. Now, what do they mean? So, means sign. Okay, so for so, I'm going to put so right here, means sign. E sine of theta equals O is opposite over H, which is hypotenuse. If you remember, hypotenuse is the side that's opposite the right angle. So in this case, this problem that we're working on, 17 is the hypotenuse. Cosine or ka, C-A-H, cosine of theta, that's what the C stands for, is equal to adjacent, adjacent over H, as you guessed it, is hypotenuse. Toa means tangent of theta. 
equals opposite, always opposite, it's always opposite, and A is always adjacent. So, three possible formulas, it's all in here as well. Now, here's what we do. We're going to use a Greek letter, and that's this. This little funny circle with a line through it, that is called theta. Theta, in this case, is the angle we're talking about. Whenever they say theta, that says, what angle are we talking about? It says, use the triangle in problem one. What are the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios for angle G? So angle G is the one we're talking about. Angle G becomes theta. So angle G is theta. So right now I'm going to call that theta. Now I'm going to, they want to do sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, sine of theta, or sine of G, let's call it G here. If I knew what G was, I could put that number in, is opposite. Now opposite to G is the side that is opposite to G. If I go this way, Opposite to G is this side, and the value of this side is 15. 15 over the hypotenuse. Well, we know something already. So this side is the opposite. Across from R, which is the right angle, is my hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse in this case is 17. We did one already. Sine of G is 15 over 17. We're already halfway done. Well, one third of the way done. Now they want to find cosine of theta. Well, theta is still g. It hasn't changed. And now I look for the adjacent. Well, adjacent means next to. Here's my trick. I always, when I'm talking about an angle, and I decide angle g is my theta, I find the opposite first. The opposite is all the way across there. The adjacent is the one that's left over in my mind. It's always the last one. It's the one that's sitting next to. Adjacent means next to. G. So the adjacent in my case is 8. The hypotenuse still hasn't changed. 7. T. And finally, the tangent is the opposite. Well, the tangent of G is the opposite the opposite we already established is 15 over the adjacent, which we already established is 8. That's it. Now, we're just establishing things. We're not talking about how to put them in the calculator yet because we're going to get there. So as long as you can establish these, we're halfway there. We can let the calculator do the rest of the work for us. And these are definitely calculator problems. If you don't have a calculator at home, you need to get decimals. There is no way to do this without... No, you don't need to get decimals. You need to get something with a so cotton tower, what they call a scientific calculator. I, on my, on my calculator, I have the Desmos app. Okay. This is my scientific calculator. So I could do it on here. On my Desmos app, I'm going to hold. Let me turn the light on so you can see it a little bit better. It's not very clear. You can go to the App Store and buy it for Apple. I don't know the availability for uh, Androids and stuff like that but there are calculators available. So you can use this one, which is nice. Uh, I just started using it today. I find out it actually works pretty well. Uh, if you are insisted on using the calculator in your, in your phone and you have an Apple phone like me, there's a trick to this. You know, this is my regular calculator. It's a regular, what they call a four function calculator. If you turn it on its side, it suddenly becomes a, a scientific calculator. And you'll see the sin, cos, and tan, the soca and toa, right there. And they actually have these two, which actually makes it a little bit easier. So if you have an iPhone, you have, you have a scientific calculator. If you have a, a decimal scientific calculator, that's great. If you have a regular calculator, that is great too, okay? So there's a bunch of ways to use this, okay? So there's other online calculators. So let's look for a scientific calculator. And make sure it has sin, cos, and tan as your three options. Okay?
All right, so I'll, I'll let you go for this one. I'm coming back with the independent practice. We'll actually do some math and use the calculators for these problems. All right, have a good one.